Welcome to this Abacus tutorial on beams. Um, the idea here is to look at beam elements or 1D beam elements and uh, compare them to analytical solutions when they're submitted to different types of loading. So we're going to go th through three examples today. The first one is going to be a cantilever beam with point load, then same beam with uniformly distributed load, and then finally um, a linearly distributed load. So I'll go right in and create my part, which is going to be just the beams wireframe. So double click on part, call my part beam in the 2D space. In uh, here we have to change it to wire because the beam element is really more of a line. And um, to make sure I have enough room, I'll go with 500 millimeters. Press OK, and then our beam today is going to be 300 millimeters long. So I click the zero, 00 for first coordinate, and then I'll enter the second one just for convenience. 300, 0. Then I press the middle mouse button to confirm, then confirm again, confirm again. Now here's my, my wireframe for my beam. I'll come back to the part later. Then we're, we're going to go next and create the material. So let's say we're using aluminum today. And we're going to define the elastic properties here. So 70,000 megapascals and 0 0.3 for Poisson's ratio. That's good. Then next step is going to be to define the beam section or the beam profile. Um, so our beam here is going to be just a rectangular beam that has a rectangular profile. But first, I'll just show you what Abacus can do here. For example, if you wanted to use an I beam, you can come in, come in and input every dimensions, and and Abacus will pre-compute the the inertia of the beam but that's not what we're going to do here so i'll double click profile just call it profile pick rectangular continue and then here in in the dialog i'll enter we'll say three millimeters for or the the width of the beam and the height is going to be 15 millimeters so that's good and i just want to draw your attention to the the directions here one and two because we're going to see them again later on um, when we assign the beam section to the element. Press OK. Now I'll create a section that will receive the profile as information. So here we're going to call this beam section. And it's a beam type of section. Beam, beam, continue. And then here it associates the profile and the material together in a section that will be received by the part. So I click OK and then I can go back in the part and assign the section. So double click on section assignment, select the region to be assigned as a section. So here I might as well create a set that I'll call all, click on the beam and press done. Uh, and here I'll assign the only section we've created so far, beam section, and press OK. Now the next step is to assign the beam orientation. And basically, how is this section oriented in space around that wire? So we'll use this tool, which is the Assign Beam Orientation button. Click on it, and I'll assign it to the set I created earlier, all, you can see that it's this, the whole thing, continue. And that's where the directions of the profile comes back in, because we knew that direction one was horizontal and direction two vertical. And now it's, ask, it, it's asking here in the prompt, what is an approximate N1 direction? So that would be in the Z direction, in the, the in-plane direction so z and abacus kind of already knows and suggests 
a vector along Z. So I'll click on the middle mouse button to accept this. And we see that uh, Abacus understood and put the one in the horizontal plane. So I'll click OK to confirm the input. And now dismiss, I'm done with the, the orientation assignment tool. There's a way to verify the orientation ass assignment. So you can go in view, part display options, and render beam profile. I'll click apply. And now we see we see the whole beam shape. But really th this is just a, a display option. I wouldn't be able to interact with, with sides or or anything here. So then I'll just deactivate this and reset the view. Cancel here. And then uh, while I'm here, I'll create the mesh. And for now, let's use a single element. So in the seed, I'll just give a seed that is equal to the length of the beam, 300, apply, OK, and then create mesh, yes. And then if I display the nodes, I see I just have like two nodes at each side of the beam. Then very important step when we use beams is to assign the right element type. So I'll use the element assignment button to all again, continue. So we're going to want a linear beam. That's good. But here I'm going to change this option. So we're not going to use the by default option and rather use the cubic formulation because the cubic formulation is the one that has been covered in the course. And it's, it's the simplest one relying on the Bernoulli Euler beam formation while the shear flexible would be related to the Timoshenko beam theory. So very important here to pick the cubic beam formulation that will give us the B23 element type. So we don't want B21, we want B23. Press OK. Dismiss. Now my beam is meshed. The next steps will be creating the step, a static step, then the assembly, and then the boundary conditions and load. So I'll create the step here, double click, call this static general. All the by default options are fine. Then create the assembly and import the beam instance. Import from part. Okay. So now my beam is in the assembly. I can apply boundary conditions to it. So double click on boundary conditions call this clamp in the initial step. Okay. And select in viewport because I haven't created a set for the for the root yet. So I'll just pick this here. And I'll create a set called root done. And we'll fix all the degrees of freedom here. Okay, we see the symbol appearing. So that works. And then we'll go in the loads and create a load at the tip. So we need to go create it in the step. We're going to call this tip concentrated force. Continue. Pick this. We'll call this tip for the set name. Done. And I'll assign a force of 10. Next step is to create the job. So we're just going to use the, we're going to call this one beam job. And we're going to use the by default options for the job. Let's run, let's run it, submit, completed. So we look at the result. And we're going to look at displacements here, U and U2. And change the display of the legend so it's bigger. And we're going to do fix. All right, so the displacement at the tip is 1.52. And I got a calculator here 
with the tip load to verify my result and you see there's a good match five two three eight and same here five two three eight so that worked fine and we can see that with a single element we can retrieve the exact solution i'll return my model and then we'll try the uniformly distributed load so i'll go in my loads suppress this load so it won't be applied anymore um, but i can just save it in in my model so if i want to reuse it later i can always resume it but for now it's going to be suppressed and then i'll create a new uniformly distributed load with the line load tool so i'll call this one udl and in the sets i'll create i'll select all very good and the component downward is going to be in newtons per millimeters and i'll assign 0 0.3 press ok so here with the yellow arrows we can see that the assignment worked and we resubmit the job completed look at the results And now in terms of displacements, obtain 5.1428. Go to the analytical solution, 5.1429. So again, we get a perfect match. So that means that even with a single element, we still obtain the exact solution at the nodes. So now we'll throw a um, slightly harder problem at Abacus and we'll use and we'll apply the linearly distributed load. So again, I'll suppress the previous load and create a new one that I'll call LDL line load on, on the beam, continue. And instead here, I'll have to go change the distribution so i'll click on the create analytical field button and we'll call this one triangle and here the expression is dependent of the physical space here and of the, the, the dimensions so i'll create just a varying load that goes from one at the root and goes down to zero at the tip so we'll go as follows 300 minus x divided by 300 so that means that if x equals zero i get one and if x equals 300 now it equals to zero so i'll press ok here very important to go pick it because even if i created here i created the distribution here in this dialog it won't pick it automatically for me so i need to go select it in the in the menu and i'll assign 0 0.5 so that means that my load instead of going from 1 to 0 actually will go to from 0.5 to 0 click ok we see that worked because the arrows are following that linearly distributed path and then i submit the job again now it's completed look at the results and now we get minus 4.285 So you see that it's not working anymore. The displacement obtained in Abacus is almost twice as big as, as the expected analytical solution. So something, something wrong is happening in there. Let's see in Abacus what happens if we increase the mesh density. So we'll use 100 elements instead. So I'll go back and model in the part, double click on mesh change the global seed for three so it creates a hundred elements and we see the seed generate 
the mesh, yes, and rerun the analysis. Results. Now let's, let's look at U again, U2, 2.2859. Two point two eight five seven. So clearly, um, we got closer. So the the model was set up correctly. So that means there's something weird that is happening, either with the element, with the single element, or with the load distribution. So a way to verify how the load is distributed is is um, applying boundary conditions on both sides and looking at the reactions. So here in the loads, we'll maintain the loads, but I'll come in and create that new boundary condition on the other side. Go in the initial, say fix right. And I'll simply select it here in the viewport. I'm not going to create a set. So select the right, I'll select the right end and clamp it and I'll go back to a single element. And mesh, submit the job, look at the results. And I'll be looking at the reaction forces here. And I can make sure I'm looking at the right value by using the query tool and probe values and probe nodes. So I'll be probing the left node and the right node. So we can see that that two loads are equal, which is not a good sign because we know that the, the distributed load is much bigger on the left side and we're going to look at the reaction moments and again probe them here and we see that the reaction moments are equal and opposite so to verify this we're going to go back to the course nodes and look at pre-calculated consistent load vectors with the scenario five and we can see that it doesn't make any sense with uh, what is going on in abacus as we see here that the, the 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 reaction force should be much bigger on the on the left than on the right and the moments shouldn't be equal and opposite so basically what that tells us is that Abacus has no feel for consistent load vectors here in that sense, because otherwise, uh, if if the consistent load vector was pre-calculated correctly, we would still obtain the right solution at the nodes, even with a single element. So that will be it for this tutorial. Thank you.